Hello and welcome to Artwork, a conversation with creative people about the joys, the challenges and the mundane moments of living an artistic life. We're your hosts, I'm Poppy Rose. And I'm Bray Robertson. And our artist today is Ellie Duncan, ceramicist and photographer from the Shetland Islands. Ellie is a sea-inspired artist from the most northerly islands in Scotland, the Shetland Islands. Photographing the sea and its many moods has been a creative outlet for Ellie since she was young. This led into the creation of ceramics, where she is particularly inspired by the tones and textures to be found around the coastline of Shetland. During the pandemic, Ellie started her business, Island Ceramics, after having the opportunity to be in a state of creativity while on furlough from her previous employment. She committed to her creative business and took a leap of faith, deciding to go all in on her creativity. Ellie further connected her work to her home islands by naming her collections with Shetland dialect words relating to the sea. In having such a love for the sea, Ellie is also passionate about caring for the marine environment and the wildlife that inhabits it. In this episode, we talk about how to get started in a creative business, the importance that nature has in our creative process, believing in the art that you are making, and how we can support artists who are committed to sustainability. So what do you say, Brie? Should we dive in? <laughs> Let's dive in. Hello and welcome Ellie to the podcast. We are so excited to have you here today. I cannot wait to jump in to all of the amazing goodness that you are and that you do um so yeah welcome how are you feeling today I'm feeling good thank you for having me I'm so excited to chat to you both about creative stuff because it's not often and um it's always inspiring to speak to people like yourself yeah 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 well we find it so so inspiring even when yeah especially when we're talking to artists who do different things to what to what we do I feel like we learn so much from each other and like even though we are doing different things, we all have so much that connects us. Mm. And that is what this podcast has really, yeah. really taught me that we're all, we're, we're all in this together. <laughs> I yeah. wish I could say. <laughs> <laughs> we're so excited to talk about um, your love for nature and how you use that to inspire your creations but first of all can you tell us um a little bit about where you come from because that's pretty key in um I guess it's been a a really vital part of how your creativity has evolved yeah so I'm from the Shetland Islands which is the most northerly islands in the UK um in Scotland so I'm just surrounded by so much coastline. As we're speaking now, I've got a big sea view. So if I keep looking off into the distance, I'm looking at the sea. Oh, <laughs> I tend to do that on these amazing. on these video chats. Um, yeah, so I've just grown up seeing the sea every day. And um, it just becomes so familiar that it just naturally led to being what inspired me most. I didn't consider myself a creative person until I realised how much I love the sea and just with photography... And it flowed into being everything, really, for me. Mm. It sounds very cheesy, but um, <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> what What was it like growing up on the Shetland Islands? Yeah. Tell us about your island. How many people live there? What's the life like? So I think we've probably got twenty four thousand people, um, and I live outside the the capital of Shetland, which is Lerwick, just outside. Um, So it's brilliant. I mean, like the whole of Shetland is just your garden. I quite often just take myself off for a walk. I don't go with anybody for these coastal walks on big cliffs and you just, you don't see anybody if you go to particular places and it really, um, it fills up your cup pretty well. Um, So yeah, but I mean, I wasn't too adventurous growing up until obviously I had my own freedom. It was brilliant. It was really lovely. Summertime is the best time. Yeah. (laughs) Going to the beach. Mm. What's it like in the winter? Like, is it quiet? Is it like um, the island, the the, the island islands? Um, (laughs) But is it quite like blustery and windy and rainy in the winter? (laughs) We, We pretty much have just 
six months of winter. So when summer comes and it's not good weather, you are annoyed because it's it really is just frustrating. You need your sunshine, you need vitamin D. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, in but I mean for me personally, I I love the winter time because you know the moods you get and it's it's lovely for photography and just being cozy inside yeah um and it, it wakens you up you know if you go out for a walk I'll take my camera and you know you kind of have to perch close on the cliff top so you're not blowing <laughs> and then if you stand up you're nearly like being knocked back because it's so windy wow. but it is it's beautiful I think all year round it's beautiful oh my but goodness. particularly winter time because it's just so dramatic mm. and oh I just mm. love it the big waves and all the sea foam like driven up in the cliffs and it's just beautiful but a lot of people I mean it's a long winter so a lot of people struggle mm. <laughs> yeah you need to yeah. do lots of nice stuff eat cheese and eat <laughs> drink wine <laughs> to make up for it do you ever go for a swim uh, a winter dip in the ocean do you like doing that I do but yeah you need to have a thick wet suit <laughs> yeah okay so <laughs> but it's yeah. lovely on a still day you know if you go snorkeling and there's so much to see in winter time better than in summer so yeah that's good to take advantage of wow when did your real passion and love for the ocean begin yeah because I think I absolutely took for granted where I grew up when I was younger. I didn't realise just how amazing it was until, um, you know, I was maybe in a city. And for me personally, I'm just not a city person. And um, I would miss seeing the sea. (laughs) So even just a few days away from the sea, I just feel a bit sad. (laughs) Yeah. But Mm. I think it was, it was probably a school, in school age, and I would go down to the beach after school and just deal with any stress or anything. And I would go and just sit there. And then I realised that it, it is cheesy, but it really was a tonic for me. Mm. And um, it progressed from there. You've mentioned your that you use a lot of photography to like, and I love your photos. They really capture the the energy and the, the essence of the waves and the, the ocean. When did you first pick up a camera and what yeah, what inspired you to start capturing this landscape? Um, I think I was about 11, which probably ties in with when I was going down to the Seymour. Mm. And I did such an awful job as well. My, my grampy, so that's my great granddad, he was a photographer for, was it the Herald Times newspaper? It's no longer a newspaper um so I've actually got a lot of his old cameras like old accordion kind of cameras oh. so I used to you know get them out yeah. the cupboard and just be fascinated by them and that sparked something which then led to just getting a little like Sony digital camera oh. <laughs> just taking pictures of like flowers and things and um and then it progressed to the sea not that I took any good photos <laughs> rubbish photos but um yeah, so around 11. Wow. Did you consider yourself a, an artist at that point or was it just something that kind of like flowed alongside <laughs> other things that you did? Yeah, never. <laughs> I never even thought it would be something I would go into. Yeah. I think at that age, I, I do remember watching a programme and it was it was glass making. And I was like, wow, that is so cool. Mm. And um I did imagine, like, oh, that's something I would love to do. Like, when I'm grown up, I would love to have my own bowls and my own glasses. So it was always something I knew I wanted to try, but never any. I never thought I would be creative. And I think it was only until I launched my business that I was like, maybe I am a creative. But you, you know what I mean? You don't want to yeah. ever label yourself. Like, I'm, I never considered myself arty. So it's, mm. yeah, it's funny, isn't it? It is funny. We talk about this quite a lot, actually, yeah. because a lot of, I, I've i never really considered myself as a as an artist because I was kind of like, I'm, I just don't feel that I am one of those people that can like immerse themselves fully in their creativity. And I, I love to do lots of different things. So am I, am I really an artist? And it's really a question yeah. that a lot of people have, yeah, brought up on on our episodes that like we feel 
we it's almost kind of like daunting to call yourself an artist because it's like am I claiming to be something that I'm not when actually if you create you are <laughs> why not you know she just Every, everybody's an artist yeah they are exactly mm. yeah yeah, yeah we need to but it was funny because in school like I know they have photography now I never did ceramics and if there was photography mm. at school I probably would have recognized a passion for that a lot sooner but I never had the opportunity to do it mm. so I think I think it would be great to have school children trying a lot more yeah Mm. yeah because I I was never good at anything in art (laughs) Mm. and I took so long Mm -hmm. yeah 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 so when did um photography become like more of a more of something that you're like oh actually I'm I'm quite good at this and I, I really enjoy this when did it kind of evolve from you know your little Sony camera to actually let me yeah get a, a perhaps a, a better camera two years ago only two years ago and it was then oh, wow. that yeah it was only then that I um I just spent every weekend that I wasn't working just out and it was it was winter time I got it so we, and at that time we had a lot of stormy weather so I was in my element and then I was just hooked wow. but yeah before that it was usually it was usually just on walks. It was like, I can't help but take photos. But then when I got my new camera, it was, I went out to specifically take photos. Um, I think it's just nice to share with people because mm. um, not everybody's willing out to be on a cliff top when it's like 70 mile an hour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're letting us see what we yeah. cannot. Yeah. <laughs> Something pretty massive happened in your life during COVID um, where you started your own business making ceramics. When did you start making ceramics? Was this a completely new thing that you started when the lockdown happened or had you done ceramics in the past? Where did this Um, come from? So it was the previous year, um, whatever year that is, 2019. No. Oh yeah, twenty nineteen. Yeah, twenty nineteen. Twenty nineteen. Um, I I went on my own to Edinburgh just for a course, and um, just just gave it a go because I'd always wanted to do it. Like I previously said, I'd seen stuff on the TV, and I was mm-hmm. like, one day I'll try that. And I thought, oh, maybe during a holiday. But I was like, no, I'm gonna make this the holiday. Wow. Um, and it it really was a time just to do something for myself. So I just went on my own. And stayed in a lovely flat with a cat called Gus, Gus, Gus. (laughs) (laughs) And um, went on this two-day course and it was just, it was amazing. I came back so happy and, I mean, it was at a difficult time in my life. I needed to do something for myself. Mm. Um, So two months later, I purchased my first wheel and just practiced. And I, I honestly did terrible, but... I, it's just nice to get messy and just to know you're working towards something and I think having faith and that you know you will progress and you maybe are in the stage that you're not so good but you just trust in the process mm-hmm. um and then yeah in lockdown I was on furlough so I just practiced every day I set up a studio in my sunroom <laughs> and um I just knew I was like well this is it now. I'm gonna start the business. Oh my gosh! Amazing. After a lot of practice, though, I must say, and honestly, tears. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like ceramics can be a little unforgiving. Yeah, because you think it's all dreamy, you know, creating things, and it's not an easy process. And you don't every day isn't easy. It is wonderful, the whole process of being creative, but it's. It's uh, up and down. <laughs> How did you get the idea to start a business? Where did this um, come from? Um, do you know, for me, it was just a flexibility to look after myself, mm-hmm. to go out and walk when I want to. I was in a job that was, um, you know, it was hard going. It was in childcare. Mm-hmm. I was exhausted. Yeah. And um, 
I'm only 23, but I did think, well, what can I do to um, do something for myself? Like, let's think of something now. Like, I don't want to wait until I'm 40 to change something. Like, do it now. Um, so that's what I did. And it got to the point where I thought, okay, I could sell these ceramics. So I left my job while I was on Fuddlung. Um, yeah, so, I mean, it wasn't a difficult decision, but... Um, it's a scary one. <laughs> it's a scary one. Definitely, oh my yeah. Gosh. Especially when um, you're maybe you've not been long into something. I've never been to college for any, or you know, to do arts. Um, I never considered myself arty before, so it was like, oh, the imposter syndrome was alive. <laughs> mm, mm-hmm. But yeah, do you just you've got to trust in it, don't you? Yeah. And what you know can become, because you can see the vision of things better than anybody can. You just have to fully go for it. I love your pieces that have, they're they're so beautiful. And I feel like the glazes definitely really capture the Mm. ocean energy of the Shetland Islands. And- I love that you call them, um, the names are from a Shetland Island dialect. Can you tell us more about that? Because I didn't even know that that was a thing. Yeah. And then I read this and I was like, wow. <laughs> so yeah, tell us about that and what inspired that decision. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't have like a strong dialect. Maybe if you did come here for this trip, you'd be like, oh my goodness. Some people you, you maybe wouldn't understand so well, mm-hmm. but um, the our dialect is something that um, it's beautiful and I think it's it was a great way to kind of share how amazing it is um, and relate it to Shetland further. So Lurgub means sea foam. Um, it's kind of like when it's driven up in the cliffs and then it sits where it's a bit, you know, the wind's not getting to it and it all sits. And it's like, it's like this silvery, creamy colour. It's I've not captured it yet, but it's on my list to do. Wow. Um, but we didn't have much stormy weather this winter, so I wasn't able to get my Lurgub capture of inspiration. Um, but Labrack means the surf. And there's this particular colour you get that's like the most fleeting colour when a wave is breaking, just like this bright turquoise. So um, I use that as my inspiration for Labrack. Uh, yeah. <sighs> Wow. Mm. Just to capture it on a different form, on a different form. Yes. yes. And that's, it's so amazing that you have, yeah, something that's so li- liquid as the ocean is now like in stone or, you know, in yeah. something so <laughs> solid. Yeah. Yeah. I find that so interesting. And I think, you know, I went for tableware because I think that, well, I consider food like a, a sharing thing. It's such a nice way to connect with people, you know, if you mm. have like a nice glass of wine and nice food. And so the whole idea was to take it in. Um, that If you're not beside the sea, you've got it there on your table to use every day or mm. just to make that kind of cup of coffee, coffee, <laughs> cup of coffee more, um, you know, you can take a moment to just have some self-care with your your cup if you like the sea and maybe um for people who've moved away from Shetland to have a little bit of Shetland in the form of ceramics oh it's beautiful it's just amazing how like (laughs) nature and your art has come together you know like you you really rely on that nature to be able to create what you envision that's kind of how I what I'm hearing when you talk, it's like, yeah. I haven't been able to make that because I haven't been able to see the sea foam. Like, that's amazing that you're so like <laughs> connect that your creativity is so connected to nature. Um, do you think like, I wanted to ask this question on kind of on a bigger scale, but do you think that nature in general is important for us humans to be creative and to feel inspired and, you know, be happy in life? Yeah, I absolutely do. Because, you know, the sea has so many health benefits. Just a walk beside the sea, getting the spray on you, um, being in a forest, whatever it is that is your thing, 
it's so important just to have that time for yourself I think as well it's such a self-care mm. time to go out in nature and um it takes us back to the basics doesn't it mm. so for me yeah for me like it's necessary to keep my head level <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 to keep you healthy yeah yeah absolutely mm. and the business is is going quite very well I'm, I I might <laughs> say you know when you. You, I'm pretty sure when when you la- when you launched your first um collection they sold out quite quickly do you want to yeah, tell us did. about um about that and how that made you you feel Oh, I cried. Oh. <laughs> did you? Oh, my yeah, God. I did. It was a release. It was such a, you know, it is a stressful yeah. time, isn't it? But it was just more than anything. It was just that that could, um, I don't know, my, my creations could mean something to somebody else. That's the whole, it was just so lovely. Um, I mean, I didn't have many pieces for sale at first, and I've still not had like a huge amount for sale. Um, but yeah, that, that was lovely. And I, it kind of affirmed to me that okay this is the right track absolutely <laughs> you can worry a little less yeah oh. um but I've, I've actually only recently just gotten some shelves I've not had shelves until three weeks ago so I've not had a lot of room to make ceramics and store them so now that I do have my shelves I can make a lot more thankfully wow. so it's nice so I've, I've got lots of flowers on the top <laughs> in oh, my sunroom beautiful. it's just oh it's so nice <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm I'm really interested because I think um a lot of people have probably been in your position where um they have a job and a creative passion and they would love to do the creative passion more um but actually to kind of like jump out of that security blanket of the the job and believe that your creative hobby or passion could be something that could support you how did you go about it in the beginning of like building it as a business what kind of pointers would you say were really important for people who might they might do ceramics or maybe they do um, jewelry making or whatever it might be what would the first kind of steps be that they should take if they want to start their own business I think that you need you need to fully believe in yourself mm-hmm. and what you're creating because if you don't, how can anything solid come from it? How can anybody else believe in your work? Um, but it, it's not easy. It's really not easy. But I would say that just completely trust in what you're creating. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I was. It was. I mean, it's risky leaving a job, especially if you've worked hard to be qualified in a job. But maybe. Um, having your um, business building up on the side until you feel confident enough to go into it mm. full time to commit to it fully I didn't do that <laughs> <laughs> I, but you know if you just if you just know in your bones it's what you need to be doing you just gotta go for it yeah You've really got to just commit to it um, mm. and uh, yeah I'm not sure what else I would say did you think speak to oh, creatives? I would probably say. Mm-hmm. I would I would say just to speak to creatives, other creatives, and um, connect because that was something I was quite scared to do. Mm. You know, because you think, oh, you might be rejected. You know, I'm not really this arty person. But just speaking to people like yourselves, you can feel so much better and just sharing your unique creative. Um, points of view and you know so important to feel like you're you're not the only one and like it and that's I think that's kind of why we started the podcast Mm. as well especially during lockdown we knew that so many artists were going to be at home not really able to do what they normally did feeling quite isolated and I think as an artist as soon as you feel isolated you you just start to doubt yourself immediately like the the imposter syndrome comes in the self-doubt comes in the frustration with what you're creating comes in we really need to be connected to the to a creative community to 
to just like, I don't know, be lifted up or feel like we belong and feel like yes. we're, we're on the right mm-hmm. track. I don't think we can yeah. do it alone. So I yeah. totally agree with you there. How have you gotten the word out about your business? What tools have you used? Have you kind of, have you had market stalls or we, do you have a dog? Sorry, can you hear my dog barking? Oh, Sorry. that's okay. We can have dogs in the background. I've, we've usually just got <laughs> sirens, yeah. like Berlin oh, good. ambulance sirens. <laughs> yeah. The dog's great. Oh. I, I did shut him out the room and he was looking at me like, what are you doing? Oh, <laughs> you can, but yeah, you can still hear him. You can bring you him can in if you them. want, if you, if, <laughs> if he'll be, yeah, more chilled with you. <laughs> He's just barking at somebody at the door. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, I was going to say, how did you get the word out about what you were doing? Were you focusing yeah. on like – spreading the word in your immediate community in Shetland, like at market stalls, or were you trying to like reach a wider audience through social media? What kind of, um, yeah, tools and marketing did you use? Well, because, because I'd been sharing a lot of, um, wave photography, it naturally just progressed Mm -hmm. into, um, sharing of ceramics and I did I shared a little bit on like my courses and um the process of building up to having a collection so it it just flowed quite well on Instagram and that's all I really did um but I do think when you do find your niche then people do just understand it so obviously I had the wave photography and it it did just flow so luckily people just understood it and they were so supportive Mm. of my creative journey which was lovely and so have you sent your Mm. your Shetland ocean inspired wares across the world like where have they where have they gone Australia (laughs) there's one in Australia oh my gosh yeah yeah Australia um America uh, where else? That's the two I can think of. It's Julian and America. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow, that that's amazing be... though. Yeah. It's uh, you're just like, what? Oh. <laughs> that must be so wild for you, like to because Poppy, I'm sure you you experience this too. Like I d I don't sell any artwork. I I can see if people in different countries are listening to my music and that's very exciting. But I can't imagine like packaging something up that you've made that someone's ordered and sending it across the world, being like, that person is going to hold this in a few weeks. Yeah. Like that must just be so incredible that people yeah. are are buying your your artwork from all over. It is lovely. It's nerve-wracking, especially with ceramics, because they're so fragile. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so fragile. But had no breakages yet, touch wood. Touch wood. Oh, <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll touch wood as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm you, also but... touching wood. No breakages. So as you've been so inspired by the sea, something I am so excited to talk to you about is your recent cleanup challenge and everything you've been sharing more recently on your social media about ocean plastic and everything to do with protecting our oceans. Mm. And I'm so keen to talk to you about this because, I mean, we're all climate activists here, um, but I feel like when, I mean, we both live in cities I rarely see the sea. I see the sea maybe once a year. And if I do, like, it's it's on a plane and I'm looking down at it. Like, mm. it's just never been this huge part of my life like it has been for you. And so when all these news stories come out of, like, um, you know, plastic in the oceans and all of this, like, it's one of those things where, like, I, I understand it, but I feel like I don't understand it until you see it, yeah. you know? Yeah, I understand. And... I think seeing your Instagram and knowing that we've we've been having this conversation in the diary for a while, I've been, you know, looking so often, I see all of these photos and like, I can't believe 
that there is that much plastic coming out of the oceans. You know, you were sharing just going for a little walk and picking up a whole bag in a few minutes. And that's something that I still can't really like fathom. So uh, yeah, and <laughs> I've lost my train of thought, but I'm just so excited to talk to you because I think you're doing, you've got this big platform and it's growing and growing and you're using it to share about these really, really important issues. And yeah, I guess I just want to know more about your your opinions on that and like what has made you to start really sharing about this and doing this um, campaign online and getting other people involved in the community and yeah, tell us everything. I'm so yeah. excited. So, I mean, just by spending so much time on the coastline, you're seeing so much. And as well, um, we have lots of otters in Shetland, um, seals, humpback whales, orca, minke whales. There's so much. We wow. even have a Baskin shark come in here. We've, I think we've had three already this summer. Wow. I've sort of time wow. to snorkel with them. But I mean, I mean, so when you spend so much time um, watching an animal, like otters, um, reading articles about, um, I particularly looked into the effects of like PCBs on orca. Um, and how this is affecting their fertility. And there's only one pod of orcas in Scotland that are resident. They're on the west coast of Scotland. And there was a female called Lulu that washed up on the island of Tyree. And they um, they discovered that she had the highest concentration of PCBs in any animal recorded um, in this particular pod. I think, was it eight eight members of the pod they had? And well, they've not had a calf in over 20 years, which is awful. It's Yeah, it's really bad. So our only mm-hmm. resident pod in the UK um, aren't reproducing. And, I mean, this is a threat for all pods of orca so I mean it's going to be really interesting to see over the next you know 50 years um what happens which is really sad because they they're a big thing here in Shetland we have a Mm. Facebook group with like thousands of people um and you update when you see them and you can follow them for a whole day along the coastline because they they eat seals so they they do um hunt very close into the coastline and it's amazing I mean you can be within a meter of them it's insane wow so I think um spending so much time with wildlife around Shetland and seeing how much plastic pollution I was finding on the coastline I just started to become so passionate about it it's something I wasn't as aware of as a child we we have um a beach clean that occurs every spring in Chatland and lots of people get together to do beach cleans and it's amazing but we really need to be doing beach cleans all year round Mm. so I mean I'd seen how much there was from this um, island-wide beach cleans but during my project the cleanup challenge I was doing beach cleans on my own and I was just honestly it was backbreaking work and I was just coming away like I'm gonna have to come back tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day and the next day before this beach could look any better because when you're doing it on your own you really feel the weight of just how much Mm. is sitting there Mm. and under the seaweed as well it's not just what you can see it's embedded in the the banks you know um like the the earth ropes um it's a stressful topic Mm. (laughs) it's really stressful Mm. I did a lot of research prior to the project and it was just oh, going to bed with a headache because it's just horrible. Um, mm. I mean, you can read a lot about, um, if you've heard about the Pacific garbage patch, mm. um, so the ocean currents move marine waste and they end up sitting all together in a patch and... Um, there's just so much waste sitting there. But then, of course, you have, you know, islands and coastline where 
um, it gets washed up. So it's not even just what's on the shore. Like it's mind blowing to think of what's in the sea. Mm. And um, some sinks to the bottom, obviously. Some floats, some entangles animals. A lot is ingested by animals. And only some of it washes ashore. So it's just a totally mind blowing Mm. topic. Mm. Yeah, I mean, when I said I was excited to talk about it earlier, I meant in the way that, like, I'm I'm excited about your passion for doing something oh, good. Thank you. I'm not excited about the plastic yes. thing in the mm-hmm. ocean. I just want to yeah. make that clear. <laughs> yeah. It, no, I understand just, that. I yeah. Know. Yeah, it's, it's difficult. It's difficult to know what to do. But part of the project was to... Um, I mean, beach cleans are good, but you need to stop the source. So it is looking into eco-friendly, amazing products to buy. I just think they're so much nicer. Like I use glass bottles and I refill locally of uh, milk. And it's just so nice. I'm like, oh, my glass bottle. Mm. <laughs> it's a plastic. Oh. Um, and like shampoo bottles, if you get a bar and soap and conditioner, that that alone is incredible it's so easy I, I know it can seem quite daunting especially if people have children been through a pandemic everyone's been turned upside down but it's as simple as deciding to use bars of soap instead of liquid soap in a plastic container mm. that can uh, help stop this huge crisis mm. so so the project you're talking about this is something that you are starting like is this um like you're you're starting your own project on the island for the uh, the cleanup challenge the cleanup challenge was um it was a litter clean project that took place over two weeks mm-hmm. um and it was it was uk wide because i also had a giveaway incorporated so you could submit back your efforts and then you could win some eco-friendly prizes and some sea inspired art um so because i had um eco-conscious businesses and um sea inspired artists from all over the uk involved i had people sign up from all over the uk i even had somebody in um massachusetts sign up wow and um wow was the other place somewhere else I can't remember possibly New York but yeah it was just littered clean so it was in forest it was beside rivers um and the reason it was held over two weeks was just to offer flexibility Mm -hmm. to people taking part and it was all documented on Instagram everybody shared their photos and it was so lovely and so many children signed up we actually there was lots of people that signed up here in Shetland. We we had an entire nursery um, from one small island in Shetland sign up. And they did so good. <laughs> they did so, so good. That's amazing. Are you hoping that the ceramics that you're making inspires people to consider the, yeah. the marine environment? Yeah, I'm, I really hope so. Um, 10% of my mugs goes to a wildlife sanctuary here, here on Chetland, um, mm. and they take in a lot of seals and otters. Um, so once I'm into my first year, it'll be so lovely to give a donation to them. And what I'll do is every year I'll change it. So I'm thinking next year, 2022, it'll be a ocean conservation uh, charity so we'll switch it up mm. um but yeah d- also encouraging beach cleans and just speaking on this topic because my inspiration does come from the sea I really feel I need to give back I spend so much time there mm. and it's something that I feel like I just really need to do um yeah after seeing so much from around my home island Mm. Mm. it really excites me all sorts of people from all parts of the world of all ages um are creating art and building businesses but with a with a conscience like with a social conscience or an environmental conscience and like wanting to kind of 
bring them together rather than start a business and kind of like exploit everything so that we can get ahead. It's like, how can the two actually like go hand in hand? And I think that really excites me that like the growth of your business will mean a bigger ability to give back to the ocean health and, and, you know, ocean conservation. I I think that's amazing. Such a small difference, but I hope it does make some difference. It'll be, yeah. I'm excited to see where it goes as Island Ceramics goes on into the future. And I love that it gives us, it gives us, um, you know, people who might not know how to give back so um, easily. It's amazing to have businesses that we go, okay, I can support them and I can support their vision by buying their products and like that's how mm. I can play a role and everyone can do something and oh, everyone can work together <laughs> you know because like there's there's people here in Berlin probably who don't know how they could help the ocean but um you know directly but they can indirectly help the ocean by like buying one yeah. of your products and you know mm. you putting um you know creating your your projects and things in on the Shetland Islands it's just yeah where are we putting our money people let's put our money in <laughs> sustainable places yeah we vote with our money you know and uh it's really important with each pound or euro or dollar like where you put it is is huge mm, yeah yes mm. yeah, so, you know supporting brands with the big eco-conscious mindset with those values instead of supporting companies that aren't um don't have those values Mm. you know that they're never gonna have those values Mm -hmm. you can all think of those kind of companies um and I think as well like you know even in Berlin like your your plastic can end up in the sea so wherever you are it can end up in the sea I think that's something that I had never really thought about and probably people maybe in um, more landlocked areas maybe wouldn't ever think about, but every single person is um, contributing to the problem and can be a part of the solution. What's your vision for Island Ceramics? My vision is having my own workspace to go into, to have it separate from home. Right now it's in my Mm sunroom. I think it's good to have that separation Um, and to have a place people can stop by and you can welcome them in. Because right Mm -hmm. now it is all on my website. It's through Instagram, but I love connecting in person and especially for tourists that have come such a long way to see Mm -hmm. Shetland, to be able to have conversations with them about my home islands and my work and um yeah that's a big thing for island ceramics I want to connect with people um so having that having a studio space and a, a little shop space to sell from and greet people in would be ideal preferably mm-hmm. with a good tv <laughs> to kind of tie it yeah. all together and kind of set out the way just you know quite remote so that people can really get a feel for what island ceramics is all about I grew up near the ocean um in Australia and that's part of like the biggest thing I struggle with being in Berlin and especially now that I haven't been able to go home like it's been a year and a half has it been a year and a half since I've seen the ocean I think it has I think it has been a year and a half and like I have to go to the lakes like Berlin luckily has lakes and I just go to the lakes and I go for a swim there but it's it's just not the same and I feel like there's a there's a part of me that's just slowly dying (laughs) because I haven't seen the ocean so it's so nice to hear you talk about it and I'm just imagining those like winter days and imagining (laughs) can you uh, can you turn your camera around so we can see it yeah yeah yeah, unplug this. <gasps> yes, please. It'll be off I'll in the look. distance. We're kind of up a hill a little bit. Ooh. Okay. So, let's see if you can see this. 
Oh my god. Yes, oh my god. god. <gasps> <gasps> that looks so oh. it's stormy. Yeah, but that looks so atmospheric. Oh <laughs> Here's oh a good view. God. I just sit on the couch sometimes. I'm like, what? It's just amazing. Mm, it is lovely. Oh, stunning. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you'd rather Oof, watch that than watch TV. Out, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank yeah. you so I, much. I do for feel that. very that lucky. So wonderful. Some... <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. I feel so terrible that you've not been beside this evening. Because I, honestly, I can't cope with it. It's been a few days if I'm in Edinburgh. Mm. I love Edinburgh, but well, mind you, you can't see the sea. But it's it's seeing for me. It's like seeing the horizon. Yeah. When I'm in a city, like seeing loads of buildings go on and on and on, I'm like, oh no. I know. <laughs> but seeing the sea go yeah. on forever is so comforting. Yeah. It depends what you've grown up with, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 yeah so for me, for I'm a. Soul. I'm a Taurus. I'm an I'm an Earth sign. I I love the the forests and the hills and the the, the greenness. And I've recently oh, no. I say recently, but I moved to to Bath um, when there are so many hills and forests and like the Earth nature, Beautiful. which I just it like it is so like like you said at the start, it really fills your cup to be in nature and be surrounded mm. by whether it's yeah the the sea or the mountains or the forests or whatever part of nature that you feel that connection with mm-hmm. it really yeah. is so and magical a, and powerful a free go to mm. yeah. anything to be able to no, we're so lucky when is your next collection going to be launched yes I keep delaying it I'm so bad <laughs> um I'm still working on it because you know it needs to be just right but yeah this new collection is gonna be a bit more greeny um well seeing as this will be out when it is released the name's gonna be Shurmal which is um that means we're the tide, the sea meets the shore. So quite close in, you can have like such lovely, you know, when it's glassy and it's green, that's what is going to be my inspiration. Oh, so I'm excited to get that one out. Oh, that's wonderful. So there's going to be a few different colours for everybody, I hope. Mm. Got the bright blue and then the the kind of minimalist, um, grey kind of white collection in Laura Gulp. And then this one will be a bit more green. Wow. Which is it's such a yummy colour. Yeah. Yeah. What what is included? Do you have mugs and what other pieces do you make? So I just do mostly tableware. I have been making some plant pots because <laughs> it's summertime. Oh, cool. And I've gotten completely flower obsessed. So <laughs> Wow. Um but yeah, just tableware, so bowls, mugs, um, plates and little jars with like cork tops. Oh cute. Um, cork such a good material um it's so eco-friendly so yeah just little jars so one of them will be coming up um this weekend when I have a restock so just simple things but um yeah yeah all tableware oh that's wonderful our final question usually is what advice would you give to other creatives or other people out there um from what you've learned on your journey is there anything that you'd like to pass on to others who might be listening to this? I think I would probably say that don't get too caught up on what's going wrong. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think that um, it's so easy just to stumble um, on a hurdle, but really you need to look at how far you've come. You know, even compared to a month ago, you've progressed so much. Mm-hmm. Look at it and celebrate your wins. Make sure to note down you know, your your achievements throughout your journey and the process. Um, and just sometimes to take take a step back and just look at that, look at that journey. Mm. And um, yeah, just, just believe in what you're creating. Go for it. Amazing. Such a good idea to note down your achievements because you're right, it's so easy to to not realize that you are progressing because you might not necessarily be where you want to be but 
like you probably okay. are where your self from five years ago would only dream of. So yeah, it's all, it's so relative. Yeah. A little example of this is that Dom and I, my duo partner, we have a lot of things that we need to pay for over the next few months to, to release our EP. So we need to pay for videos and photos and online PR and ads and things like that. And so we made a, a little thermometer and we've st- a big one and we've stuck it on my my living room door. And every time we go busking and we make some money, we like draw in where we're at on the scale so we can see we're nearly there. We've we've paid for the CDs. We've paid for the amp. We've paid for one video. And it's so exciting to kind of track mm. where you're at um, and, and celebrate That's a good it, idea because really it can't be stressful. Yeah, yeah. So mm. noting your, your achievements, that's a great idea. Good, good advice. Advice. yeah every every month I have a, a check-in and I think what have I achieved in the last month or what have I what have I ha, yeah how do I feel like I've grown in the last month and I think it's really important to yes have those n- numerical goals of like how much money you've made or how many sales or you know how many numbers numbers but I think in addition to that it is really important to have you know personal things and like I've grown in this way like for example in my intention for May when I started my new job was to embody bold strength and to embody confidence and to embody that energy into my life and then I looked back at the end of May and I was like yeah maybe I didn't hit the amount of Etsy sales that I wanted but I did embody strength and I did grow as a person and I think those achievements are equally as important as and exciting mm. as the the big goals that you have and the, yeah. the big career move dreams it's it's all intertwined in yeah. a in a beautiful yeah intertwining thing all <laughs> fulfillment and flexibility yeah. and time for self care mm. yeah. yeah yeah exactly it's it's all so so important um along along the way so yeah getting into a habit of doing that every month I would recommend because Mm, that's a great idea being able to look back and then set the intentions like what do I want to what do I want to bring in next month what's going to be the theme what do I want to come back to every time I get a bit lost and uh, yeah getting lost is a thing having your own business and in creativity that's a thing yeah Thank you so much, Ellie, for joining oh, us thank today. Thank you. What an amazing chat. Thank you so much. You're both so beautiful. You're so lovely. I really enjoyed speaking to you. Oh, we I just hope you too. come to Shetland. Oh, <laughs> oh, I'm definitely coming. Oh, are you up for that? I will. Yeah. I will I would, be coming. I would just love to show you around. I'm so up for it. It would, it would be brilliant. No, definitely, definitely coming. All right. Well, we'll let you go. Have a wonderful day surrounded by the ocean. Give it a kiss for me, just like just wave to it or like <laughs> I sent you know, roll in the sand <laughs> just like put your toes in the water <laughs> and just um just say oh, hi cool. just say hi <laughs> thank you so much for listening to today's episode we'd really appreciate it if you would take the time to subscribe to our podcast and review the episode so that more people can find us in the future Your comments help us pop up on people's suggested podcasts, helping our artist stories reach a wider audience. Podcasts are best shared by word of mouth. So if you know people who might enjoy this episode or the artwork podcast as a whole, we would love it if you told them all about it. And if you'd like to be a part of the artwork conversation, we would love to invite you to join our artwork community Facebook group where you can connect with the artists we've featured on the podcast and share your art with a like-minded community. You can find the link in the show notes as well as all the links to today's artists. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook at art.workconversation. And stay tuned for our next inspiring episode. Bye. Bye. Bye.